the problem of describing the structure of DNA was solved by James Watson and Francis Crick. They described the three-dimensional structure of DNA in 1953 and for their work they were awarded with the Nobel Prize in the same year. The major features of this model are as follows. So they, they described that DNA consists of two helical polynucleotide chains. So two polynucleotide chains, they are joined with each other and then these chains are helically coiled around an axis. So as you can see in this picture, the two strands, these, these two polynucleotide strands, they are joined together and they are wound around the axis. This is axis and they form a double helical structure as you can see here. So this is a double structure of DNA molecule. The second uh, important point was given by uh, Watson and Kip and that was the hydrophobic backbones of the alternating deoxyribose and phosphate groups. They are on the outside of the double helix and they face the surrounding water. You can see in this picture, these are the alternating phosphate and pentose. Phosphate, pentose, they lie on the outside of this double helix while these bases they stack inside the structure inside the duplex next the pairing and coiling of the two strands two strands of dna they create a major groove and a minor groove on the surface of the helix and in this picture you can see this is a major groove and this is a minor groove. These two grooves are made because two strands, they first join together and they then they both coil around an imaginary axis, a single axis and they form two grooves, major groove and the minor groove. Each nucleotide base of one strand is paired in the same plan with the base of the other strand. So as you can see in this picture, the T is linked, is attached with A and similarly C is attached with G inside the helix. The next uh, important point with J, which they uh, describe, uh, they describe that uh, G will always pair with C while A will always pair with T. Why? Because in a uniform helix, if A joins with T and G joins with C, they best fit in this helix because A adenine is a purine which is of larger size and T thymine which is a pyrimidine it is of smaller size again g is a purine larger size and c is a pyrimidine which is of smaller size so one base is of larger size the other one is of smaller size similarly if a larger base comes on this side smaller will come on this side in in this way a uniform helix will be formed so these, these, this combination best fit in the structure of helix. Next, uh, they described that the two strands of DNA are present in an anti-parallel orientation. That is, their 5 to 3 phosphodiester bonds run in the opposite direction. That means, if one base is like this, its 5 prime is here and 3 prime is here while the other base, other uh, strand will be on the opposite orientation that is its 3 prime will be here and 5 prime will be 
here. So in this way, two strands, they are present in an anti-parallel orientation. Finally, they also uh, uh, described that the two anti-parallel strands are complementary to each other. This means if A is present in one strand, T will be present in the other strand. And if G is present in one strand, C will be present in the other strand. So these two strands are complementary to each other. You can uh, write like this. Uh, G, C, T, A on this strand. The, on the other strand, it will be C, G, A, T. So this is called complementary base pairing. So this, this model which was described by Watson and Crick, it counts for all the available data which was provided by Shergov, by Wilkins and Franklin and it also fits all the chemical and biological testing.